Hi everybody, Justin Zimmerman here from Iron Horse Athletic Club. Yes, we are doing some at-home kind of workouts for all of you since we're all pretty much in this together and you're not able to get to the gym. So today, this particular segment is going to be using the physiology ball. That is going to be your yoga ball. Uh, maybe you don't have a yoga ball at this point. You might want to think about investing in this 10 to $20 item. Um, they come in different sizes and different textures. Personally, I like the spongier texture. And what I have are two different size balls here. It's hard to see from the video, but this one's a little bit larger. This one's a 65 centimeter. This one is a 55. So depending upon whether you want to be higher up or even the length of your body will determine which ball you're using. Anything smaller than this is going to put you in pretty much a difficult form for what we're doing in this class segment. But uh, either one of these two would work fine. So the other thing you may want is a mat, especially if you're on a hard surface, because when you're on a hard surface, you don't necessarily have the control of the ball. It might try to get a little bit slick. So this helps to adhere it to the ground. If you're on carpet, you may not need the mat unless it is a short carpet, in which case then it might slide as well. So those are the two things you'll need. And of course, water. Always want to make sure that you're well hydrated through any of your workouts and also make sure that your medical team is on board and your doctor knows that you're starting any new fitness uh, regimen that you might be uh, encountering these days. Uh, at this time now, we're gonna go ahead and start right into this, this particular exercise. We're gonna be doing both uh, cardio as well as strength training, but with this limited amount of equipment, you'll be surprised at how much you can get done. All right, so I'm gonna be using this particular ball here right now. And we're going to start off just basically pushing into the ball. So I'm going to turn sideways and let you see my form. Cueing a nice flat back, chest open, elbows out to the side, and not locked knees, just straight leg with a nice soft bend. So you've got a little bit of drive in the heel, engaging those hamstrings and holding steady through the quad. Now my hands are going to be just about that far apart on the ball. And like CPR presses, I'm going to put the palm of my hand down and bend just a little bit into my elbow, which wouldn't be like CPR. Get the bicep and tricep moving in and out with nice compression into the ball, flexing, warming up the chest, the shoulders, the bicep, the tricep, and of course, as always, hold those abs. Four, three, two, and one. Good. Now let's stretch out those legs just a little. Roll back onto one heel, then the front knee, and stretch. Again, hold those abs. Want to make sure that you don't let those get all squishy. Now step together and switch to the other side and roll back onto that heel. Feel the baby cows on the back side of the legs, also known as calves, stretching out. Good. Now come back in. This one we're going to take a wider stance. And we're gonna start moving in through the legs. But as we do so in the sumo squat, I wanna make sure that you understand that your extension comes back, not forward. We don't wanna put a lot of pressure on the kneecap. So we wanna make sure that the pressure is the tailbone driving back and down, going through the quads, feeling a little bit on the inner thigh and outer hip since we have that sumo position. Placing those hands again in the same position on the ball, we're doing the same movement with the upper body. Pressing down with a little bend in those elbows, come down with the legs and up. Not gyrating through the spine, that back is flat, keep going. Good job. Keep it moving, squeeze press. Good. Yeah. Push that ball around, show it who's boss. Six more, five more, four. Three, two, and one. Good, we should be all warmed up. Upper body, chest, back, and legs. So now we're gonna grab this ball. You're gonna take a wide stance. Press those palms together. Take the ball up to one shoulder, and we're gonna take it down to the floor. In doing so, I'm going to have that side lunge. Just a little bit going back. Turning sideways, you can see I'm not pushing out on that knee. Take it to the floor, bring it back up, squeeze the hands together. Down, up, down. There's five. I'm at this. Woo hoo, six, seven, eight, nine. There's ten. Good. 
doing just ten. What else would it be? It's a perfect name. All right, take it to the other side. Bring it up, squeeze. Take it down. Make sure your position's correct on that leg. Up. Remember to contract the abs. Give me five more. Five. Squeeze the ball at this point right there. Two more. One more. Take it back down and rest. Good job. Should have a little cardiovascular going there. So many muscles demanding oxygen at one time. You're bound to increase that heart rate when you get all those muscles playing together at the same party. Okay. So now we're going to take that ball, put it in front of us, and we're going to put our leg up on it. Don't panic. We're not putting both legs on it. We're just going to do the one. So I want you to extend that ball out away from you, extending through that hamstring. Flex by pushing the heel into the ball and come back. Now I'm going to turn sideways so you can see this. And I want to make sure your stabilizer is also in proper form because it's very easy to get yourself into a position out here and lock that knee, and we don't want that. So when you take that extension out and you drive down, there's a slight bend. Bring it back and bend, bring it back. Again, you'll notice I'm not arching my back, I'm not gyrating, I'm just folding forward slightly from the hip flexor and coming back with complete control and feeling that hamstring all the while. Two more, one more. Great, let's go to the other side. I'm completely turning around because I wanna make sure that you can see me. Ready, and extend. Back, two, three, four. Doing great, five, six, seven. Zip up those abs. Nine, chest is open. Ten, good, bring it back, nice. Okay, so now we have got some core work in. We got pretty much the upper body, lower body, all warmed up. Let's have a seat on our ball. Let's start with some of this fun stuff. So now we're gonna go into some cardio moves. If you're not comfortable with this particular move, you can back yourself up to the corner of the wall. So if the wall is coming out on either side, the ball can be between it and you're sitting on it. That way you don't risk the possibility of the ball shooting out from underneath you or you losing balance and falling off the ball until you're more comfortable with a sphere underneath you. You could do that. If you don't have a ball, you can do some of these moves if you have a cushion on a chair. However, it is more difficult because of the impact. The ball itself is filled with air and has a certain amount of forgiveness that you're not going to find in a chair. So first of all, we're going to start with our little marches out, about hip width apart, but not completely together. We're going to hold our legs. I want you to sit nice and tall like there is a piece of string pulling your head right up to the ceiling and contract those abs as always. Shoulders are not rolled over and you're not sagging into or collapsing into that body. You're staying completely erect and tailbone is driving right down into the center of that ball. We're going to march it out with a straight leg, straight leg, in, in. Out, out, in, in. Extend, extend, back, back. So on this one, I'm not so concerned with your position of leg in that I'm not trying to work directly into one muscle and isolate it for strength training. What I'm trying to do is get the muscles to all move so we get some cardiovascular, get that heart rate going. I want to feel that, that breathing accelerate. Give me four more. So in order to do that, quicker than slower, we want to go ahead and bring those arms into it. So we're going to go on the other side now because believe it or not, it does make a difference. Start with the other lead, bring it out and in, out and in. We're going to start crossing the arms. Right across the chest, one, two, and bring it back, and one, two, and bring it back. Do, 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 do. It helps to have music. The reason I do not have music in this segment is I want to make sure you're hearing my cues. So right now, if you have music playing in your home, you can turn down the volume once you've got the cues down, listen to your music, and just watch me and follow along. Give me three more. Feel that heart rate coming up. I feel my breathing. 
And one more. Good. Now you've also, whether you realize it or not, got a better identity of where the center of your ball is and better balance for your core. So we're going to roll you forward just a bit. So what did I just do? If you look at me sideways, you can see where I just put the ball behind you slightly. So your tailbone is not shooting directly to the center of the ball. It's shooting somewhat back into the ball. And you, again, can place this into the corner of the room to back yourself up if you would like. So what I want you to do now is get some quadricep work going. You're going to just do little bounces. Squeeze the glutes. Don't let that ball get away from you. You're moving into the ball. The ball is not moving you. Okay, just moving in and out of those quads. Okay, got that feeling? Now, I want you to bring your heels closer to, and I want you to move in a larger movement. Don't lose your ball. Good. Now we're going to take it to where we're going to clap over the head. Take it down, clap. Take it down, clap. You want to feel those quads. So you want to be putting that pressure on that upper part of that thigh. Squeeze the glutes to make sure you got control. But most of the work is coming from those quads and definitely getting some cardiovascular. Let's change those arms and go forward and over. Forward and over and forward, and over, and forward. Keep it strong. You're not flinging. You're moving. You're in control. Whoop, whoop, and move. Up, forward, up, forward. Three more times. Up, forward. Give me two right here, and whoop. And one more time. Great, now stop. Notice that stop is almost as difficult as the movement. <laughs> Great job. All right, this one I'm turning slightly sideways for. Come back up on top of your ball. Tailbone's driving right down into the center for this one. So you're gonna keep those shoulders stacked over the hips right now. And I want you to step out and step in. Feel your position on that ball. Okay, now we're gonna take it the other side. Out and in, out, and in, and out, and in. Good job. Now this is more or less just to get accustomed to this movement, moving laterally outside the center of the body on the ball, bring it back together, because what we're going to do are jacks. So again, let me reiterate the importance of making sure that you're stable on this ball or back yourself up to a wall. Okay, so we're going to move our legs out in a jack form, move our arms up and move in and out of that. Ready? Begin. Keep it strong, hold the abs in. It's like your hippity hops, remember those? Oh man, that's why I got into fitness, so I could play hippity hop. As an adult, it would be acceptable. <laughs> Keep it going, I'm going for 12 more. That's 11. Great job, seven. Six, five, almost there. Let's do it two more times. And there you go, and stop. Good, now let's challenge your balance. Get that balance going. Roll forward again so that the ball is behind you. You're gonna lean back just a bit. Don't round into it. Keep that chest open. Leaning back, you're gonna take one leg straight and lift it. Up and down, feel the quad. Feel the hip flexor right there. Feel those lower abs contract. Switch legs. Bend the knee, straighten the leg, point the toe, and lift. Keep that lean back. You want to feel those abs. Good job. Two more times, and release, good. Come up, let that lactic acid release itself just a bit from those legs, catch your breath. Wonderful, the next one we're gonna do is for the abdominal area, but the beautiful thing about getting to use the yoga ball for this is that it's also going to help with the flexibility in your vertebrae, because as you're moving back and forth with those abs, it's giving the spine the ability to move in its natural form 
fold back and forth. And in essence, that's what our abs are meant to do. Protect both movements for the spine. We don't just crunch. We learn to open and expand and strengthen those abs in an opening position as much as a crunching position. So don't think of this particular exercise as a crunch per se, because you also want to make sure that you're doing the opening expansion. So you're going to be working on both movements. So I will do it sideways for you to see. We're going to stand right, sitting right upright, then roll forward, having the ball slightly behind us. Now, I drive into the heels. Why? Because when the energy is in the heels, it's going to stop me from pushing into my quads. If you're not comfortable with that stability, by all means, put your feet down and focus on those abs so that the legs don't take over in this particular exercise. Bringing yourself back to a leaning position. Now, notice I'm not like this. I have got that chest open and those shoulder blades pulled back so that those abs are forced to open. And then I come back up and then I go back, and then I come back up. I'm hinging at the hip flexors, and I'm keeping my chin up like I have a grapefruit under my chin, so I am not grounding into the neck each movement, and I'm flexing the abs from the lower abs all the way up to the top. So the whole rectus abdominis working together beautifully. Give me three more of those. Three, two, and one. Good, that was with the ball stable. Now we're gonna move the ball. We're gonna get a little compound movement through the legs as well as the abdominals. But again, make sure you're aware you're trying to work the abs and don't let the legs take over everything. So on this one, we're actually going to be moving the ball with a roll. You're gonna take it forward, come back all the way down, squeeze into those glutes, having yourself positioned back almost like a flat table. Then you're going to bring yourself up, bringing that tailbone right into the center of the ball. Down and up and down and up. You can keep your hands out. You can cross them at your chest. You can bring them along the side, whatever helps you to feel stable and in control. Now again, you'll see that spine just naturally meets the ball. It almost gives a nice stretch to all those muscles along the vertebrae. As you're opening and crunching, you'll start feeling that warming sensation, lactic acid flowing right into those abdominals, which makes us know we're working. Gonna continue on with this one for just another moment more. Seven more. And keep breathing all the while. It's real easy to hold your breath during abs, but not good for you. Three more. Two. And one. We want to make sure you keep breathing so you don't put any extra stress on the body. So the next one we're going to do is going to be in that same rolling crunch style movement, but we are going to take opposite elbow to the opposite knee when we come up to our position of upright, okay? So we're still moving the ball and coming back. We're holding those abs and leaning. We're coming up and we come forward with a twist. Now, this is gonna bring it into the obliques. We have both external and internal obliques. As you twist and flex, you'll feel how it almost wraps right into the band back there below the lats. And that's what we're trying to get. Come back to center where you're upright again. And then go back, come up, then twist. Come up, come back, come up, and twist. That way you don't put needless movement or too much momentum into the movement of the spine. You complete the sit-up, then you twist. Up, back, up, twist, up, back, up, twist, up, and good, and up, and up, up. Give me three more to each side. Three, three, here's two, two, 
One more. And taking it back down, come back up and meet me in the middle. How's it going out there? Now would be a perfect time for you to get some water. You can go ahead and shake out any of those areas that might be feeling a little tight or maybe the lactic acid is flooded there. Abs, legs, grab some water and we're going to go ahead and change our position on the ball. As I mentioned before, you can do this on a chair, you can do this on the edge of the couch, you can do this on a large pillow in the middle of the room, but really this is not an expensive piece to buy. What I typically find is people's biggest complaint with the yoga ball is that it's difficult to store because it's full of air and is quite large. It doesn't stuff into a drawer. You can't really put it in the garage without it rolling all over unless you have a place to stick it. So that is truly going to be the most difficult part. And during this time of being cooped up during our uh, social distancing, we probably would like to have some of this equipment out and about anyway. So it might be something you might wanna look into. All right, so facing your ball. And again, if you have the larger ball, that's always good if you tend to be taller. It's going to put that distance more between uh, the hip joint and your knee. So you can use a larger ball, especially if you tend to be taller. If you tend to be, if you are, you don't tend to be, unless you've stretched out on a tappy pool, and that's possible. All right, belly button's gonna go down on the ball. You're gonna go ahead and bow over, and you're gonna straighten out those legs squeezing the glutes and the heels toward each other. Now the heels don't have to be touching or together because we can have a little distance, but we don't want them flapping out to the side and twisting into the knee. Now, as far as the back is concerned, we are gonna be working into that lower back here with a nice gentle back extension. So you are going to feel that area warm up, but it's gonna be assisted by those gluteus, the AKA butt, squeeze. So that's gonna take a lot of the pressure off that lower back. So bring the fingertips down to the floor or as close to as you're comfortable with. That should feel good, a little stretch on the ball. Now put the energy through the toes into the floor. Squeeze those glutes and lift up like Superman as far as you can comfortably without too much hyperextension and down. Find your place. Never push your body beyond its needs. You wanna make sure you're within your range Squeeze those glutes. Two more times. And here's your last one. Good. Hug the ball, drop the knees, and stretch that spine out the opposite direction. It should feel good. Excellent. The next two and the last two. Exercises I'm going to show you on your yoga ball today are both going to give you a little bit of cardio and can be a lot of fun. We're still staying in the position of the plank, so you are going to put your body onto the ball. You're going to roll your body to where you have the ball positioned somewhere between your hip bones and your thighs. Okay, you're going to go ahead and come down into a push-up. So your plank is going to come down. Your thumbs should be pretty much right across the chest, and you're going to push up using the chest to compress right here, like you're pushing in to those armpits. Take it down and press. Elbows are folding back and out, not completely out, and you are using bicep, tricep to assist that chest. Now we're gonna add something else to this move. When you come up from your push up, you're going to do a flutter kick for two and down again for the push up. One, two, down. One, two, down. One, two, down. Keep those legs from bending. Flex the hamstring. Feel the glutes. Point the toe. That'll give you more control. Don't forget you're squeezing into the chest on that push up. Down, up. I'm not bending my knee. We lose that energy and we go into the joint instead of using the muscle when we bend that knee. So keep that muscular skeleton engaged. One, two, down, up. One, two, down, up. One, two, down, up. Five more, guys. 
Down, up, four. Three. Two. Kick. Take the push up. Come down and rest. Woo! Should feel some nice arm warmth, chest warmth, a little bit of glute, and some cardiovascular. Great job. Now, if on your own you wanted to do multiple sets of any one of these exercises, you could do that. You could extend this video workout into an hour long by just repeating what we just did for a second or third set and increase your strength and your stamina, okay? So you don't have to do it along with this video every time. Get familiar with what you're doing and own it. Make it your workout so you can start weaving this into what you're already doing or some of the other workouts that you're also getting from the Iron Horse. It'll just fortify your own personal workout regimen. Okay, the last one. This one is a more difficult move, and I want you to consider focusing on all body parts because it works every part of the body. Even your big toe is going to work on this one. So we're going to position ourselves to where the ball is going to be at our knees or even lower for more advanced movement. The lower the ball is on your body, the more difficult this move is. So moderate right here or down further if you want it to be more advanced. Thumbs are underneath my chest. I don't have them up here. So check your arms, put them right underneath your shoulders and have those thumbs turned in toward the chest. Okay, we're going to bend the knees, rolling the ball forward. And rolling it back. Squeeze as you come back, make it nice and pretty and long. And in, and out, in, and out. In, and out. Try not to arch into the back. Keep it nice and straight. If you really want to get sassy, you can do one knee at a time and bring it in and take it out. But you gotta switch those legs. Give me three more, guys. Come on down. Hug your ball. Coming up, arch the back and open the chest for a nice little stretch. And pull those elbows back. Breathe. Take it down, hug your ball. Reach one arm up. Nice little twist through those obliques in the lower back you worked just a moment ago. Feels good. Yeah. And the other side. Take it up. Try to get that flexibility to pull back as far as you can. Breathe, don't hold your breath. We need oxygen in that blood. Bring it back. Hug that ball. Walk yourself up. Carefully come up from your ball. And that concludes our segment of the yoga ball workout. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions or concerns, we are taking uh, emails through our Iron Horse uh, email page so you probably got this on an email therefore you have the address to reply back and in the meantime stay healthy stay safe and from all of us here at Iron Horse keep your fit okay everybody good luck Mwah.